Um, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, said Hammurabi, king of Babylon in the 1700s BC. In those times, this concept meant that for every wrong, there should be a compensating measure of justice, whether it was stealing back your prized sheep or taking your anger out on the person, first person you laid eyes on. Fast forward about 4,000 years, and you land in the 21st century, where the compensating measure of justice we're talking about is the death penalty. Scott and I as a team feel that the proposition resolved that the death penalty should be legalized throughout the entire United States is absolutely worth agreeing with. Firstly, the death penalty, also known as the capital punishment, is the lawful infliction of death used as a justice system in America since 1608, according to capitalpunishment.org. Also, the resolution further interprets to mean uh, the death penalty must be regulated by the federal government and made completely mandatory throughout every single state of the United States. As of July 2009, 34 states have the death penalty, says Mark Jonowitz. 15 states, plus D.C., have no capital punishment statutes. According to Mary Williams of the Green Haven Press, there have been a total of 1,136 executions from January 1977 to the end of 2008. Lethal injection is now almost universal in the USA, being either the sole method or an option in all of the states that retain the death penalty. Our affirmative side strongly believes that mandating capital punishment will do more good than harm in our society and ultimately make our world a better place to live in. Today, we will convince you that the death penalty must be implemented nationally because the victim obtains retribution, the criminal is justly punished, and crime is deterred. First, allow me to discuss the retribution for the victim. Retribution is the moral principle that the harm and injury imposed on the victim should be reflected proportionally back onto the criminal, writes Robert Bidinato. This is both moral and practical because, one, it upholds the value of innocent life, and two, it reflects full harm back onto the criminal. Louis Poshman explains even more clearly, people often confuse retribution with revenge when dealing with the death penalty. Retribution is the rationally supported theory that the criminal deserves a punishment fitting the gravity of his crime. Furthermore, families, family members of murder victims may take years or decades to recover from the shock and loss of a loved one. One of the things that helps hasten this recovery is to achieve some kind of closure or relief for the family. Life in prison just means the criminal is still around to haunt the victim. But a death sentence brings finality to a horrible chapter in the lives of these family members. Secondly, capital punishment justly punishes the criminal, criminal for what they did wrong. J. Edgar Hoover, late director of the FBI, asked, Have you ever thought about how many criminals escape punishment, and yet the victims never have a chance to do that? Are crime victims in the U.S. today the forgotten people of our time? Do they receive full measure of justice? Basically, if we continue to let the majority of capital crime criminals sit in jail without real punishment, like the death penalty, we are being nicer to them than we could ever be to the victim. It is also an obligation for our society to punish the criminal proportionally for what they've done, or else it would not be a just society. And finally, the death penalty is proven to be an effective system of deterring crime. By executing murderers, murderers you prevent them from murdering again and do, thereby, save innocent lives. Between 1965 and 1980, the number of annual murders in the U.S. skyrocketed from 9,960 to 23,040, a 131% increase. The murder rate, homicides per 100,000 persons, doubled from 5.1 to 10.2. So the number of murders grew as the executions shrank, according to WesleyLaw.com. Uh, Nancy Moken, an ex economics professor at the U of Colorado at Denver, co-authored a 2003 study and re-examined a 2006 study that found that each execution results in five fewer homicides, and commuting a death sentence means five more homicides. These analysts count that between three and 18 lives could be saved by the execution of each convicted murderer. Our plan is this. In trials, anyone accused of murder in the first treason, and hijacking of an airplane with special aggravating factors, all are eligible for the death penalty. Criminals must be tried and convicted in fair court beyond a reasonable doubt, and appeals can then be made to the district, state, and federal court, possibly mitigating final punishment altogether. Lethal injection will be the preferred method of execution, and though it may be said that capital punishment is expensive, the same can be, same, the same can be said of, opposition, of the opposition. Life without parole is vastly expensive, often even more costly than death. And ultimately, the capital punishment in the United States has been shown to give justice to the victim of the crime, penalty for criminals, and save the lives of innocent people. 
The laws today in the United States are way too lenient. With our plan, the objective of saving worthy lives is achieved, and the ridding of evil or the criminals is also achieved. Mandating capital punishment throughout the United States will re significantly reduce the amount of violence in our country, provide a just punishment for criminals, and give justice to the victims. By supporting a change in today's justice system and voting affirmative, you are lending a hand in a moral cause that ultimately will make our society better. Thank you.